Stephen, you hit on the 60s, and, and I, that takes me right to a passage that I want to quote from. I'm only going to quote from two or three passages, and they're all kind of hard-hitting and meaningful passages. And the first one play, you know, plays right into what you just said about the 60s. It is on page 103, for those of you scoring at home. You say the death of the 60s was far more profound. It was the death of a dream of a better society, a new way of living and thinking. I love this part. The hippies were going to finally implement the ideals of the founding fathers. We may not have had their intellect, but God damn it, we had their spirit. And then that dream disintegrated with the assassination of one hero after another. The uprising of a frustrated Black population, and I, this, is, this is poetry, riots they were called, but they were really a matter of a seventh of our population waiting for the Civil War to end and they still are. And that's where we are. And you articulated it, maybe even predicted it. I don't know when you wrote that passage, but can you talk a little bit about where we were and where we are now in your view? This is such a big subject, it's hard to summarize, but um, let, let, me, let me put it this way. Uh, there's been a war going on in our country and, and our problem right now is only one side is fighting it, okay? Only the bad guys are fighting this war. And, and that's our biggest problem with everything right now. We can come back to that in a minute. But the basic war began with the founding. You know, we all like to uh, refer to our wonderful founding fathers and you know, <laughs> the wonderful Constitution, you know, and they were geniuses and the Constitution is, a, is a, an amazing document. But, you know, it wasn't perfect. All right. And the truth of the matter is most of the founding fathers, okay, were creating a white supremacist Christian nationalist oligarchy. Okay. That's what they were doing. Now, Expressly, we a, they weren't trying to hide it. No, no. And 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 now the Republicans have returned to that and they're not trying to hide it. Okay. But you know, when we think of our founding fathers and when we think of the Constitution, you know. We think of those few that were enlightened and threw in those little seeds of, you know, uh, liberty and justice for all, you know, kind, those, those kinds of things, which we have tried to live up to ever since, you know, but, but you know, we, had to, we have to keep in mind that was the min, my, my minority, you know, I mean, they, they, they had slavery in the Constitution for a reason. You know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't because they were enlightened. You know, this was a, a, a an ongoing fight right from the beginning. And we were, you know, more or less making progress through the years, slowly fixing the Constitution. Okay, now women can vote, you know, and uh, maybe slavery is not such a good idea, you know. Um, you know, and various things are getting fixed through the years. Uh, up until recently, you know, and now um, all the way to the Supreme Court, which is just incredible, uh, you know, we're starting to uh, go backwards and all the progress we've made is really starting to uh, be eroded and um, it's so depressing, you know, every day uh, when you look around at, at, at the I mean, just the, the definition of terms, which is what bothers me about journalism on TV, even our friends on TV, keep referring to these judges as conservative or Republicans as conservative or Manchin and Cinema as conservative. They are not. They are not. And it's important that we start, stop, stop doing that. These are not conservative judges in the true sense of the word. My father was a, was a Goldwater Republican. I know what conservative means. It doesn't mean this, all right? It doesn't mean going into people's bedrooms, all right? They, these are Christian extremists disguised as conservatives, all right? And that's the story right now. And, you know, we have got to start calling things what they are, you know? Uh, that, that's where a good place to begin, you know, because we just keep saying, oh, the conservatives, like, you know, uh, you know, like like the Goldwater conservatives, or even even the Reagan conservatives. I mean, Reagan began to screw up the concept of conservatism by inviting the religious right wing in. Well, well, Nixon really, Nixon first. But but you know, 
once the religious once the religious the christian right wing got into got in got in the door they never left and then they gradually took it over you know so so right now we we have these this this you know confluence you know this, this combination of christian nationalists coming out of the woodwork and white supremacists now being combined and overseen by the rich oligarchy just like the beginning of the country you know uh the rich oligarchy uh knows that they can't win in a legitimate democracy yep. you know uh so they have to employ the christian national the christian extremists and the um and the white supremacists to do all the dirty work so that they can maintain you know their 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 power uh, and and that's just that's that's what's going on right now and, and uh you know it was a it, it's been that way all along and, and so what, what hurts you know, those of us who are a little bit older you know to see the progress we had been making suddenly come to a, a complete halt right now and, and we're going backwards you know and it's worldwide by the way glenn it's not yeah. it's not just us you know i mean you know brexit just a disaster you know disaster you know yeah, that and, they'll and, never the, and the supreme court clawing back women's privacy rights first oh, in texas it. and then elsewhere i mean and again, you know, again, though, again, again, the, the, again, we, we, how, how many, how many times do we have to hear the word abortion? If people stop using the word abortion and replace it with women's equal rights, yep. you know, maybe we get something done around here. You know yep. what I mean? I mean, even the good guys are holding up signs, you know, abortion now. <laughs> like, you know, nobody likes abortions. Okay, nobody likes abortions. All right, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a necessary. What? It's beside the point. The point is women should have control of their own bodies, okay? Yeah. And to, and, and, and to and, your point yeah. about words mattering, Stephen, you know, you talk about they're not conservatives. I agree with you. They're not conservatives. So when people use terms like, well, the original intent of the framers, I'm an originalist, what we should hit them with is that mean, does that mean you want to go back to Dred Scott? A black person is three-fifths of a... Do you want to go back to Plessy versus Ferguson? That was original, right? That was racial discrimination, government sanctioned racial discrimination. That's what you want to go back to with the framers intent, really? Glenn, I, th I think the answer is yes. Yeah, they do. I, I, I'm not even sure they would deny it. Go to Kentucky and tell, find one working class person. The McConnell uh, or, or Rand Paul, what, what is one thing that those two guys have done for the working class in Kentucky? Will you tell me, how do they get elected? They they can't stand the working class. They, they vote against everything, everything that'll help the working class and, and the entire Republican party the same way. But those two guys, especially Rand Paul, you know, if, if, if he hates the government. He hates the concept of government, you know, and he, he keeps getting elected. Like, if you don't like government, what are you doing in government? I, I'm going to say, for me, the most impactful passage in the book was on page 174. And I, I would um, I would love for you to tell the story and then ask if that was part of the catalyst to get you involved in artists or get you to create artists against apartheid, because you tell a story where you're in a cab in Pretoria. And Stephen, uh, once I read that the first time, that is never going to leave me, ever. You know, it's kind of like when I would see murders that I was prosecuting that were caught on video, that it could be 20 years ago, but I closed my eyes and it's still here. That story you told is secondhand experience. It's your experience, but it stays with me and it motivates me. Can you tell people about that? Yeah, the, I, at the time, the whole South Africa thing was me turning from an uh, artist journalist, which I kind of had for creating this idea of an artist journalist, uh, I, I began to make the transition to artist, journalist, activist at, at that point. You know, I wasn't intending to get involved in any of this stuff. You know, I was just doing research to write about it. You know, I, you know that was going to be my thing. I was going to you know, write about things that, you know, are, are not on the front page, you know, that should be, you know, especially in the 80s, you know, when, when everything was happening behind the scenes. Now, you know, I mean, I mean the, the Trump years, forget it. There was nothing hidden, you know. They're, they're bragging about putting kids in cages, you know, to deter immigration. Bragging about it, you know. So, you know, what are you, what, what are you gonna, what are you gonna, you know, what are you gonna reveal with those guys? I mean, there's nothing to reveal. But back in the 80s, it was all hidden. You know, it was, it was the cowboy grandfather, smiling, happy, you know, grandfather, cowboy Reagan, you know, 
making everybody feel good and morning in America and the mansion on the hill and whatever it was, you know. And meanwhile, you know, he's, he's overseeing an enormous criminal empire around the entire world. But so it, it was a little bit, you know, more, more subtle back then. But but anyway, I, so I, I'm 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 starting to make the transition to activist and um and I'm in a I'm in a taxi and. Uh, a black guy steps off the curb. I don't know, I'm just kind of half paying attention. And the cab driver swerves to hit him, you know, for a sport. And I, and I, you know, and I was just kind of like, did that just happen? You know, I honestly, I couldn't quite imagine that, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't accept that that just happened, you know? And uh, and that's when it, it, I kind of went over the line from these guys got to go. Okay, <laughs> I mean this is uh, this is way beyond. Now I, I had had a whole series of interviews with people, and I was digging deep at that point, and I started to realize when, when I got to the religious part of it, and I realized that they were teaching in their religions uh, that black people were inferior. You know, this was part of their religious teaching. I was like, this is deep, okay? This is this is this is more than just economic slavery like we had, you know, with building our country on the backs of slaves, you know, which is what they were doing too. But it was more than that, it, you know. Uh, it was uh, some level of, of of just completely unaccepting. Well, three three fifths of a human being, you know, for us, and uh, no fifths of a human being down there, you know. So very similar. And by the way, I, I I was never very condescending about this stuff because you know, our our civil rights act was sixty four, voting rights act sixty five, housing sixty eight, and and now in two thousand thirteen they took it away. Uh, you know, so I mean I wasn't down there saying aren't we superior to you? Believe me, you know I was down there saying man I'm just embarrassed that my government is doing this, supporting this. You, you know, so anyway, so so that was the beginning of me. Uh, saying, you know, uh, I can't just write about this. I, I this, These guys got to go. And I remember hearing you say before when you were talking about that episode, you know, once that happened, you said, you know, this this cannot stand. This cannot stand. Yeah. And, and then, Stephen, you put your money to the extent you had money where your mouth is by, you know, was that part of the catalyst for Artists Against Apartheid? At that point, I realized, you know, it, it can't just be another song on my on my new Freedom No Compromise album. It has to be a, a separate thing. And there st had started to be these multi-artist things, you know, We Are the World and uh, and the other one, uh, uh, Do They Know It's Christmas, uh, you know, you know, these kinds of issue oriented multi-artist uh, records. So I said, well, I'm going to do that, you know, but I'm just going to get one artist from each genre. So we have some kind of solidarity, you know, five, six you know people and um uh, luckily um i i found the three guys that would be my partners in this who were absolutely equal partners in every way you know, starting with danny Schechter, uh a, a news guy from from boston uh no longer with us unfortunately he's the reason why anybody heard of it he ended up being the, sort of the publicist of it of it all because of his connections uh, Arthur Baker, uh, it, it was it was his phone book, literally. That's on that, that's on Sun City. You know, those those fifty artists are his phone book. You know, and his studio, and his engineers, and his and I mean, just incredible uh, contributions. And and, and Hart Perry uh, videotaped it all, or else nobody would know anything about it because radio wouldn't play it. You mm -hmm. know, it was only people only know the song from video from the video. And Hart brought in uh, Jonathan Demi and and Godly and Cream ended up doing the edit. So the video really saved the day, you know. Uh, but it was the four of us really that that um, that jumped in at that point. And and, uh, and you know, it wasn't it was just very very haphazard. It wasn't organized, you know, like Quincy Jones or Bob Geldof. You know. Uh, we had people come in and I didn't know how many were going to come in. So a lot of people sang the whole song, you know, and I have to figure out which line they were going to have later. Um, people came in. It was only the one single when we started. But um, the one thing we wanted to do, the one thing we wanted to emphasize, you know, one, one of the things was, um, was, was putting this new thing called rap on the record, uh, which the industry was trying to squash and ignore. And I felt that these, this, this new thing called rap was important. Uh, I, I had watched the black uh, uh, the black artists, uh, 
you know, suffer for years uh, being unable to express themselves. I saw Marvin Gaye have his fight with Barry Gordy and, and, and Stevie Wonder also. And, um, and the truth was the black artists were just not encouraged to express themselves politically. You know, we had some exceptions that, that, that just were exceptions because they were not quite in the rock mainstream world like Gil Scott Heron uh, and The Last Poets, you know. But mostly um, black artists were simply not encouraged to express themselves politically. And white artists were. They were expected to, you know, to follow in the, in the, in the, uh, you know, wake of of the, of the man who at that point was God, which was Bob Dylan, you know, uh, 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 Jimi Hendrix was doing it. Jimi Hendrix was an exception, you know, and and, and Sly and the Family Stone, you know, started to do some things, uh, you know, subtly, and then not so subtly near the end, and and George Clinton, but it was unusual. So here comes this thing called rap, and man, they are doing nothing but expressing what's going on. And I was like, man, we gotta, we gotta encourage this. We gotta support this. And I put them on the record and people were shocked. They were like, what are you doing? You know, you're putting Run DMC uh, next to Miles Davis and, uh, and, and, and Melly Mel, you know, next to Jackson Brown and Bob Dylan. And, and I'm like, yes, that's how important I feel this is, you know? So, so we began yeah, that was to- the opening uh, verse right there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We began to we began to assemble this this very very weird sort of motley crew because we weren't picking people because of their success or their commercial success. We were you know we were we were picking people who had who had expressed themselves in their work you know somehow, and so we we again started off as just a single, but then um, you know uh, we started to say you know what the rappers come and we got the couple couple lines in the intro couple lines in the middle. You know, and they made the trip, and so uh, I don't know if it was me or Arthur or, or Danny, whoever it was, said, you know, why don't you just do whatever you want to do? You know, just express yourself. Express whatever you're feeling about South Africa. You know, so Melly Mel goes in the other room, comes back with an amazing rap. And then, uh, you know, Arthur Baker starts assembling, you know, ideas, and we put some, put, put some news footage in, put in some Gil Scott Heron, put in some, you know, beats, and... and um, and suddenly we had an, another song, you know, uh, Miles Davis comes in. I had five seconds of him in the intro, 10 seconds and another 10 seconds in the, in the middle. He, he plays for four minutes. What am I going to do, Glenn? Leave, I'll leave three and a half minutes of Miles Davis on the floor? I don't think oh, so, right? That would you offend know, so the rock called, gods and, and the soul gods for sure. We, 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 we called uh, Herbie Hancock and, and, uh, and, um, you know, uh, uh, and 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 his former his former band, uh, you know, some of his guys he had played with, uh, Tony Williams, Ron Carter, uh, and uh, had them play to what Miles had done. And there's another song, you know. Uh, Peter Gabriel came in and did this chant, and then uh, Tom Lord, the engineer, and, and uh, uh, Keith uh, uh, threw some drums on it at night. And we come in in the morning, and there's this cool thing i put a keyboard part on it and a guitar on it and there's another song you know so we created this completely organic album mm. uh from nothing you know from just the one song kind of you know get, letting everybody express themselves uh, on the subject and it turned out to be just a really completely legitimate artistic uh, creation uh, and i'm very very proud of it can i ask you now given what we're experiencing with the voter suppression laws state after state after state and our inability to get any voter protection laws pushed through congress i don't want to put you on the spot but do you think it's time for artists against american apartheid because it sure looks like that's the way we're going at this rate well 